let the weak say, I am strong. But he knows their condition. And you're going, Renee, that's just a lie. That's just a lie. I can't say that. Well, let me tell you something. There is a difference between fact and truth. God says, I am the healer. By his stripes, by Jesus Christ's stripes, you were healed. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here, and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from, because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us. This is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us. You can call us. You can message us through Facebook. There's so many different ways. But mainly, you can visit our central hub at GodSpeakMinistry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, GodSpeedMinistry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message. How many of you like to talk? Some of us are get our batteries charged by talking. And some of us just hate silence. I'm a Toastmaster, and after every speech, we have one minute of silence for the evaluator to finish their evaluation of the speaker. And they need to be able to think. So you're standing there as a Toastmaster, and everybody's looking at you, and you're going, And I can see even in just those few seconds, people are beginning to get uncomfortable because of the silence. The Bible, and this is one of the foundational truths in scripture in my life. Proverbs 18, 21. I have preached from this verse over and over and over and over. Proverbs 18, 21. You can remember the book of Proverbs written by Solomon, the wisest man to ever walk the earth. And he was endued with wisdom from God on high. And there's 31 chapters of Proverbs. You can read a chapter a day and change your life. Just do it over and over. But the way I remember Proverbs 18, 21 is that there's two legal ages in the U.S. 18, you can drink. 20, uh, no, you go into the service. Go, can go into the service and then 21 uh, legal degree. Although I don't think that even matters anymore. But that used to be how I would remember this. But sometimes you do what it takes. But in here is Proverbs 18, 21. Let me back up to 20, just so you get it. For from the fruit of his mouth, did you know your mouth produces fruit, produces results? A man's stomach is filled. With the harvest of his lips, he is satisfied. 18.21, death and life are in the control of the tongue. Death and life are in the control of the tongue. Those who indulge in it, talk a lot, will eat its fruit. Jesus said that whatever you say, you will have. Have you ever noticed that? Before I started this sermon today, the thought came from my spirit 
that our lives are what they are and can be tied back to words we have spoken somewhere in our lives or words that have been spoken over us by authorities, parents, teachers, doctors, the people we give authority to speak into our lives, maybe a pastor. But everything in our lives can be tied back, traced back to a word. Is that scary? Or is that freedom? What I want to show you today is what God has put within us. God is love. And how unloving and how unrighteous would it be if he put us human beings here at the mercy of pure evil without giving us some way to overcome and be victorious as he says that we are. He says you are more than conquerors and more than victors. More than. I mean, some people are going to stand out here with that trophy today. But God says that you are more than. And even in Paul wrote, is that if by one man, Adam, death came into the world, how much more? How much more? I mean, how many of you watch the news? Do you see the work of the devil in the world today? How many of you ever have ever said or have ever heard someone say that the world is just going to in a handbasket. And the world just gets worse and worse every day. What are we doing? I have been hearing people speak that since I was a child. I spent a few decades ago. And the world has progressively, progressively, progressively gotten worse and worse and worse. But God spoke, if you go to Genesis 1, God has given us the very blueprint of the universe. There was darkness. There was utter darkness and chaos. And this is going to give a lot of hope and peace to a lot of people here today. There was utter darkness and there was utter chaos. Nothing. There was nothingness. And then God had a plan and he spoke, light be. And there was light. Everything until he got to man, everything was spoken. He commanded it. Commanded it. Let me just read this. I'm going to stop right here and just read this from Dr. Cho's book. There it is. I've been following Dr. Paul Youngi Cho. He has the largest church in the world. He's in South Korea. But he, when he met God, he just, he was sick. He was a very sickly young man. And God changed his life, healed him, and now... He is out to preach the word. And so this is from his book, The Fourth Dimension. And in it he says, Claim and speak the word of assurance for your word actually goes out and creates. God spoke and the whole world came into being. Your word is the material the Holy Spirit uses to create. Man was made in whose image? God. God is a speaking spirit. If you go back to the Jewish uh, Hebrew in that Genesis 1, it says that God created man another speaking spirit. There is nothing else on all of earth that has the power to speak and create. Luke, Jesus said that the kingdom Listen to this. The kingdom of heaven is within you. It is in your midst. It is in your mouth. What I am teaching you today and what God has been teaching me, and, and I've got a testimony from Gary here in a few minutes that will show you what we have been putting into practice. And I am so excited about it, and I want to get it. If I could just open your heads and pour it in, I would. I'd just go around and do it now because it so changes everything. So anyway, he says, so give the word, for this is very important. The church today has lost the art of giving commands. <clears throat> Jesus, God, never once pleaded for anything to happen. God commanded, light be and light was. Jesus, 
commanded healing. He never once asked God to heal anyone. He did it himself because he had been in prayer and he knew what God had empowered him to do. He knew in whose image as a human being, fully having laid aside all of his divinity, he walked as a man just like you and I so that you and I could walk like him and bring heaven to this earth. That was the whole purpose of God. When he gave man dominion, he says, I have put everything under your dominion. If you go to Psalms 8, the angels are talking about man, and he says, what is man? What is man that you have made him? And, and again, in the Hebrew, it says, a little lower than God. The angels were there. They saw all of creation being made. They saw the stars hung in space. They saw the water separated. They saw the fish and the whales. They saw all the sea creatures, Leviathan. I mean, there's some mythical, we call them mythical, but they're in the scripture. Of things that no longer exist on earth. They were there. They saw everything that God did. And they said, but wait a minute, what is this man? You spoke. And everything was created, but yet you formed man from the dust of the earth. And then you blew into his nostrils the very spirit of life. And you gave him dominion over all the works of your hands. God in, put us here to partner with him. So let me go on here. Listen to what uh, Dr. Cho has to, say, has to say. We Christians are becoming perennial beggars. For we are constantly begging. On the bank of the Red Sea, see Moses begged, oh God, help us. That's been one of my favorite prayers. The Egyptians are coming. What's coming in your life? It may not be an Egyptian, but there's something coming after you. And God rebuked him saying, Moses, why are you crying to me? Give the command and the Red Sea shall be divided. There are times for you to pray. Yes, you go to prayer. And you ask God, you spend that time with God, letting him remold you, letting him see what he wants to say. You go to prayer to praise God, to worship him, to thank him, just to be in his presence. And it is in his presence that you are changed from glory to glory. He says, but you must pray, but there are also times for you to give the command. You must pray through in your prayer closet. But when you come out to the battlefield, into this world, you are going to... You are coming to the world of creation. When you read the life of Jesus Christ, you see that he always gave the command, take up your bed and walk. So many times he used that. He prayed all night, but when he came out on the front lines, he commanded that the people be healed. But he never did it till after he would ask them, what is it you, he always knew what they came seeking. And he was always very specific. He commanded the sea to be calm. He commanded the devil to, let, to leave. And his disciples did exactly the same thing to the beggar Peter. To the beggar, Peter commanded, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, give unto you. Rise up in the name of Jesus. To the body of a dead woman, Peter commanded, Dorcas, rise up. To the cripple at Lystra, Paul commanded, stand on your feet. He gave the word of creation. The Bible says to heal the sick. In James, the Bible says the prayer of faith to save the sick. God clearly asked us to heal the sick. So in his church, I heal the sick as the Holy Spirit guides me. I plainly stand before them and I say, you are healed rise up and stand and i call out the different healings and by the dozens and by the hundreds people have received healing but i want you to hear this one other part there are laws in the spiritual realm and you have endless resources in your heart your heart being where the spirit of god lives god is dwelling within you but god is not going to do anything for you without coming through your own life. 
Everything Jesus did, he acted. He put feet to his faith. Whatever the faith was after having prayed, after having meditated upon the word of God, then he put feet to it. Gary? <coughs> You've heard the story yesterday, those of you who are here, how my son-in-law has been speaking to his cancer and it is going away. And Lisa and he are asking prayers for wisdom. But I want you to, to hear this from someone who considers himself probably the least in the faith. But Gary has been hearing me teach on this and I want him to share with you what he has experienced. Well, like she said, we've been studying this power of our words for a long time. You saw? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we've been, even years ago, we had a Bible study at church about the power of your words. And it's, we know that the power of our words is there, but we never really acted on it. So we were studying last fall about it. And I, and, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have sinus trouble or not, but every winter, at least once, sometimes twice, my sinuses start draining. They come down my throat. It'll get in my chest. And there I've got a chest cold. So this winter, it started. And I was at work, and I said, God, I don't accept this. I'm not going to get sick. Satan, get out of my life. Take this away, Lord. I am well. I am not going to get sick. And that has happened after this week, like four times this winter. And I've done that every time, and I've yet to get a cold. I've been well all year long. So I feel like God has proven the power of our words to me. And whether you believe it or not, you got to be careful what you say because years ago when I was a kid, I mean years ago when I was a kid, I used to have a really bad cow lick right here. And I used to fuss about it, tell them, you know, I didn't want that cow lick there, I wanted it gone. <coughs> Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I got my prayers answered. <laughs> Dr. Cho, the book that I was just referencing, and Dr. Cho is the pastor of the largest church in the world in South Korea. He, one day he had lunch with the leading neurosurgeon of the day in, his, in the area. And they had just been doing brain research. And they would go in to a patient who was awake. And they would touch the left side of the brain here or there. And when they touched the left side of the brain, the right arm or the right leg, depending on which front or back of the lobe that they would do, and, and that was a response. So there they knew, you know, that's sort of how we found out that the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. And then they did the right side and the left side of the body would respond. But he's sitting there talking to Dr. Cho, doctor to doctor, neurosurgeon to pastor. And Dr. The neurosurgeon says, Pastor Cho, we had the most miraculous thing. And he told him about the two lobes, but he said, let me tell you that when we touched the speech center of the brain, every nerve, everything, every part of the entire body lit up and moved. Every part of the body responded when we touched the speech center. You see, the power of life and death is in your tongue. And he said, when we, what we learn from that is that our tongues, what we say, determines the condition of our bodies. If somebody says that I'm taking the flu, the body immediately from the command center of speech, it goes to every cell, every nerve in the body, and it says, shut down the immune system. Prepare to receive this disease because you, this individual has said, I'm taking, and just fill in the blank. Do you see what we have done to ourselves? We get those symptoms, and instead of being like Gary because we don't know, the power of life and death is in the tongue, and God says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It is my belief that God ruined, Jesus ruined the funeral of everyone he went to. He called Lazarus for four, four days later. 
You see, we don't even understand. So Dr. Cho went on, I mean, the uh, neurosurgeon went on to say that Dr. Cho, not only that, but we also know now that if somebody says, I can't, I can't learn that, I can't do that. Every nerve in the body goes through and it says, prepare to be incapable. Stop looking for answers. Stop trying to be excellent. Prepare to be an incapable person when we say, I can't. Did your mother or father, somebody ever tell you, don't say can't? You always get it, don't you? You always get it when you say, I can't. Has anybody ever, ever overcome, I can't, got, got an answer anyway? Have you? Good. We have to learn to say what we want. He went on to say that if we say, I am getting old, the body obliges, and you begin to see wrinkles. Your eyesight dims. If you say, I can't remember anything, oh, are they really playing with us? You see how the devil uses media to say that, man, I just can't remember anything anymore. And so the brain says, well, just let it go. Let it go. Let it get lost. You won't remember it. I have been changing my words and I have been saying, I'll remember that in a minute. Or that will come to me. And it has never, ever failed. It may be three days later in the middle of the night, I'll sit straight up in bed and I'm like, that's the name I was trying to think of. But it never, ever fails. And yesterday, as I was telling in here, while Connie was playing, don't worry, be happy, they have now, not Dr. Cho and not the neurosurgeon, but through quantum mechanics and quantum physics, they can now test and see that every material thing on earth responds to human sound, human voice. And I was saying yesterday that if you speak well of your race cars, if you tell it what you want it to do, if you pat it and say you're going to go down that track, it actually moves and consolidates. One, back years ago when Yuri was running Top Sportsman 96 or so, we were up in New York at Empire Raceway. And there was a guy there that came through and he had this sound machine. And what it did is that it moved the particles, and Gary let him do it on his engine. It moved the particles of the engine and made it smoother. What all did it do? Oh, uh, it, but anyway, he, we let the guy do it. To, I mean, we, God really had us on some cutting edge stuff back in the days. But anyway, he let that do, and it took away a lot of the vibration and the elements of the engine and it ran better, it ran faster, it ran smoother, and all we did was that. But God put that power in our tongue too. They've also seen that whenever somebody goes up and there, say there's a plant in the office and somebody says, I just hate that plant, I wish to goodness they'd get out of it, they could actually see the plant just pull in and shrink away from that person. But then the next person would come in and say, you know, it's such a joy to have that plant here. It just adds so much life to this place and that plant would just, it would just beam. God has put all things, all the work of his hands under man. The power of life and death is in our tongues. God has not left us here without weapons, without resources to frame and to build our lives. Hebrews talks about the worlds were framed by the word of God. Jesus says that everything is upheld by the word of his power. Now to me it should have been the power of his word. But everything is upheld by the word of his power. You give word to your power too. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I want you to hear this story out of Luke. Whoops, I've lost it. Luke, let me just share it with you. 
Jesus is walking by. He and his disciples are traveling. Everybody traveled on foot unless you had a donkey at that time and only the one really wealthy had it. So Jesus and his disciples are traveling by donkey. They're hungry. Jesus says the fig tree. And it wasn't the season for figs, but yet the fig tree was in full leaf as if it were in bloom. It was deceiving. So Jesus went to get figs off of that fig tree because it showed that it should have figs on it by its presence. There were no figs. And Jesus spoke to that tree. There were probably other figs around there. But he spoke to that tree that never again shall any man eat fruit from you, you shall die. And they just went on. Well, the next day, as they're coming back from where they had been, coming straight by there, the disciples look and they go, Master, look, look. That fig tree that you cursed, it's dead from the root. It didn't, most of us, when we see, when my plants die, they die from the top down. But this one died from the root up. And Jesus said that if you doubt not in your heart, you shall do the same. And I say to you that even if you say to this mountain, be cast into the sea and do not doubt, but believe you will have what you see. It shall be cast into the sea. How many of you believe trouble comes in the race? How many of you, um, after this, nobody's going to raise your hand. <laughs> so, I've heard people speak it over and over and over. Well, that was the first one. Uh, and they start looking for number two. And when number two goes, yep, I told you, here it comes. What are they doing? They're opening themselves up. They're calling for another disaster, another bad thing. We have no idea what we're doing. And not only that, but America has a language of that. Oh, my feet are killing me. They could be. Do you know that every nerve has a corresponding point on the bottom of your feet? When we say, oh, I've got such a, oh, a bad pain in my neck. Or you say somebody is a pain in your neck. Then every time that person is around, you will have a pain in your physical neck. You see, God has given us so much power in our words. He even says that when we stand before him on the day of judgment by your words, you will be justified or you will be condemned. Everybody says that God's too loving to send anybody to hell and God never sends anybody to hell. It's our choice. It's our words. It's our choice in life. God hates, hates, is one of his seven eights, okay? He hates evil, wicked words because he knows the power he put within each and every one of us to bring heaven to earth, to keep creating. And when we speak ill gossip of another person or when we speak ill of ourselves, oh, I can't do that. I'm just not. I'm just nobody. I read something last night. Do not get into that condemnation with Satan. Do not go to that place. And I realize that, you know, there's that false humility that we think we're being humble when we put ourselves down. And God calls it evil because we are made in his image. And he calls us to stand and take our place and to rule and to reign in this world, in this life. And do you know that even unbelievers, because this is a universal law, just like gravity is a law, that if people who understand the power of their words, they can do. This is universal. It's in every human being. We have the power. And it may take you a little time to get used to this. It usually does. Joel 3.10 says, this is God speaking through the prophet Joel. Joel 3.10 says, let the weak, what's their condition? God knows it. He knows where they are. Let the weak say, I am strong. Now, he knows their condition. And you're going, Renee, that's just a lie. That's just a lie. I can't say that. Well, let me tell you something. There is a difference between fact and truth. God says, I am the healer. 
by his stripes, by Jesus Christ's stripes, you were healed. The very same blood that bought our salvation on the cross also bought our healing, our provision, our completeness. God is coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. We ain't there yet. Excuse my English. Lack of grammar. The church has a lot to do. But God is coming back for that church. And he tells us, let the weak say, I am strong. Because whatever we say, we are going to see. If we keep focusing on hurting feet or sickness, we make it stronger. If we keep focusing on debt, we keep building the mountain. If we keep focusing on I can't, we become weaker and weaker and weaker. But the Bible commands the children of Israel, Old Testament, pre-Jesus. So you know the law, that was under the curse. And he says, let the weak say, I am strong. Now that may be a fact that my son-in-law, Matt, had cancer. You hear what I'm saying? He had cancer. But we know the truth. That was a fact. But the truth is that God Almighty is the healer. And I have to agree with God and come, if I want what God has and says is mine, then I have to agree with God, not with what the doctor said. I do not dismiss them. I mean, they're doing a great service. They're using what God has put in them to do. I know there are doctors called by God to be doctors. <coughs> But I also know they're only working in the knowledge they have, not in his, most times. Some of them do. But you see, truth is, and this is what I base my life on. This is what I have decided. I tried, I tried to do it both ways. I tried to believe God when it was convenient or when I felt like it. But I had to finally put that away and say, this is going to be the basis for my life. And if my actions, if my words, if my beliefs disagree with the Bible, one of us is wrong. Guess who it is? It's not him. So I have to make the course correction. If you get lined up out there on your race car today, do you want to be perfectly straight or do you want to be at just a degree or two off? What's going to happen? If you point towards the wall, you may not contact it up here, but probably somewhere down here. You're going to get out of the groove. You're going to be in trouble. Our lives need to be as perfect and with the word of God as that race car out there on that track. Because we know from the racetrack what will happen to us if we get out of that groove, if we're not on the straight and narrow. God has given us everything we need to live this life for godliness and for victory. How many of you came here for victory today? Not only on that racetrack, but I want it in your lives. God is looking for a people who will rise up and demonstrate to the world his power, his ability, his goodness to the world. Will you be that person? Will you course correct today and follow him and change your beliefs and, and say it? I taught this at Bible study at Sunday school last Sunday. Gary's father, 84 years old, had three major, two major back surgeries. He's been through so much, so much, so much. And after the surgery, he's just, I can't get my strength back. I'm just so weak. And he just got weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So last Sunday at church, and I taught this to, to them, and I said, the, the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. So I had him say, I am strong. Let's just do it here. Say, I am strong. I am strong. Say, I am strong. I am strong. Say, I am strong. I am strong. When you first did it, did it feel uncomfortable? You see, the more we do it, until the last one, how strong it was. So we did that during Sunday school. It started out feeling like a lie in our heads, but it became the truth as we came into agreement. We were beginning to speak to hear because Faith comes by hearing. You always read the word of God out loud. You always hear it because it does change you. So at the end of this Bible study or Sunday school, I asked EA, his dad, I said, how are you, EA? I'm strong. So the next day, I saw him down in the shop and I was down there and I said, EA, how are you today? Oh, I'm strong. 
He went out. This was early in the morning, about 9, 10 o'clock. He went out. They had cut down a tree that Gary and he both couldn't reach around. It took them forever to get the chainsaw through that. He went out and worked all day. 84 years old, dragging brush, cutting up a tree, and stacking it. The power of our words. God's put it within you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have not left us here defenseless. But Father, we thank you that your word changes us. And today, Lord, we repent of every evil word we have spoken. Every ineffective word, every word of gossip, every word of damage. Lord, teach us to guard our tongues, to guard our hearts, and to come into full unity with you. Today, Lord, let this word go down into our hearts, into our spirits, to renew our minds above, so that we may leave this place today and may put it in practice. Let us speak to our race cars. Let us edify one another in telling them what they are in you. Father, let us become people of righteous words, words of life, words of edification. And Father, may we bring your kingdom to our area of this world. Father, I just pray your blessings over PDRA and over this congregation today. Father, use this congregation to go forth from here and to bring light into the darkness, to speak well, to edify one another because we are a community that knows now. And we have one another to keep us, to guide us, and to nurture us in this. Lord, let your word, which you sent, Father, I thank you. I stand upon the promise of God that your word shall not return to you void, but it shall accomplish all that you sent it forth to do. And all God's people said, thank you, God. Amen and amen. Have a great day, God. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212. Or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately because we are preparing to become His bride when He returns for us or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with Him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. To be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed Ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in Messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.